Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Thursday, May 21st. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, businesses continue to reopen as the region copes with the pandemic. Many in Rolla have been open for a week and a half with new restrictions, and some owners are vowing to rebound. The coronavirus has been around, what, a whole hot two months? Well, Tater Patch has been around 54 years, so Tater Patch isn't going anywhere. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All will report on how different businesses view Rolla's reopening rules. As we mentioned, many non-essential businesses in the area are able to reopen, but that does not include those in the Metro East. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports Illinois businesses are preparing for when they can reopen. Barbershops, salons, retail, and most other Metro East businesses will not be able to reopen until May 29th at the earliest, but customers are already eager to return. Angela Harris owns the Edgy Chic Boutique, which has locations in Florissant and Fairview Heights. Not only are they calling us, but we're here getting prepared, changing rags, cleaning, and people are coming to our door on the daily, you know, trying to get in. Believe it or not, people are ready to shop. Harris says she's had Illinois residents call and ask if her Missouri location would be open for them to go to. She says she has not reopened either store yet for the safety of her customers and staff. She will continue offering online ordering and curbside pickups. I'm Eric Schmidt, St. Louis Public Radio. Daycares are reopening this week in St. Louis City and County, and they are creating new routines. Children are having their temperatures taken and are washing their hands immediately after being dropped off. The decision to wear masks is being mostly left up to parents. Ken Howler is a pediatrician at Cardinal Glennon's Children's Hospital. When you're talking to children about masks, uh, do what you can to demystify it. Maybe put it on a stuffed animal, you know, put in uh, and show that the stuffed animal doesn't mind. Haller says wearing masks is safe for children two years and older. He made those comments yesterday on St. Louis on the Air. St. Louis County residents will be able to splash around in public pools this summer. St. Louis Public Radio's Ryan Delaney reports. County Executive Sam Page says pools in the county will reopen sometime in early June. We know that there are a lot of kids and parents in our community that are waiting and hoping for uh, pools to get open. The county park system operates four outdoor pools. They're at Jefferson Barracks and Kennedy Rec Center in South County and St. Vincent Community Center and North County Rec Complex in North County. Specifics on timing and what types of restrictions will be in place will be announced later. St. Louis Mayor Leda Krusen said earlier this month that public pools in the city will stay closed all summer. I'm Ryan Delaney, St. Louis Public Radio. In other news, a former St. Louis alderman has reached a deal with federal prosecutors to plead guilty to mail fraud. Court documents in the case against Larry Arnowitz show he will ask the judge to schedule a combined plea and sentencing hearing. The earliest that will likely happen is late August. Arnowitz is accused of using his campaign account to pay the mortgage on his house in South St. Louis. The alleged mail fraud stems from the fact he sent the check using the Postal Service. The maximum sentence for mail fraud is 20 years in prison, but Arnowitz is likely to receive a much lighter sentence. The city of Rolla removed its stay-at-home order 10 days ago, allowing businesses to reopen with some restrictions to slow the spread of coronavirus. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports there are mixed reviews for the phased-in approach to reopening. Clear shower curtains surround the cash register area at Rolla Books and Toys to protect workers. There is a giant hand sanitizer dispenser up front, and six-foot square boxes are marked out in tape on the floor for social distancing. This is what retail looks like in Rolla following the city council allowing businesses to reopen last week. Renee Woodley is the manager of the store, She says things are going pretty well, business is slowly starting to come back, and her staff is able to stay focused on what's important. Before all this was kind of coming down, we were thinking of, you know, the various customers that come in. You know, Mrs. So-and-so comes in and Mr. So-and-so comes in, and we're thinking, we need to protect them too so that they can feel comfortable and safe to come pick up their monthly magazine, the book they like to read. We want them to feel safe too. Woodley says restrictions about occupancy, face coverings, and social distancing are fair and reasonable 
and so has been the city's inspection and enforcement. Cricket Webster and her husband own Tater Patch, a restaurant and bar that had been doing carry-out only for two months, but is now back open to dine-in at 25% capacity. There's no seating allowed at the bar, the pool tables are shut down, and live music is on hold. Webster says all of her 35 employees are back on the job, some with reduced hours, and the early signs are positive. She says the restrictions are acceptable for now, but need to continue to ease up for Rolla businesses to be okay. As long as we're able to function, if it gets more restrictive and more restrictive, um, then I think we could be in trouble. But um, I feel pretty positive that, that most of us will be able to survive. The Monday night after the state's stay-at-home order expired, the Rolla City Council unanimously passed an ordinance to reopen businesses that took effect the next morning. Still, with that quick turnaround, the city was able to work with business owners and start inspections. Fire Chief Ron Smith leads the three-person inspection team and says there were limited problems and most business owners were happy to comply. It's not a heavy-handed in, in it at all, and it just works towards protecting the people, and they've been receptive to it. But not all business owners agree. Ron Bell owns American Taco, a small restaurant in a strip mall adjacent to the Missouri S&T campus in Rolla. He says the restrictions indicate his shop that seats 28 can operate at only 25 percent capacity. So that's seven people, not seven people dining, just period. So if I have people, seven people sitting at a table, nobody can come in and order food. Nobody could come in and pick up their food. Like it just, it really just kills every bit of business you can get. Bell has decided to keep going with carryout and delivery only for the time being until the restrictions are lifted further. I'm a firm believer, like, if there's if there's rules, follow them. You know, they're there for a reason, whether I agree with them or not, you know. So we've we've just stuck with it, you know, and tried to, tried to make the best of it, you know, and it's ridiculous. Bell says after five straight years of monthly increases in revenue, business has been off 20% since the start of the pandemic. Another Rolla business that has decided not to reopen is a slice of pie. Ryan Warnell is the owner of the pie shop, he says it was purely a business decision to continue with curbside pickup for now. The cost to reopening at the, the reduced number uh, for occupancy would actually cost us more to open than it would to remain where we're at right now. Warnell says the pandemic has put plans for a second store on hold, but they have increased their focus on their wholesale business, and he's optimistic about his business's future. Webster of the Tater Patch shares that optimism. Um, what I've tried to tell my staff and my customers is the coronavirus has been around, what, a whole hot two months? Well, Tater Patch has been around 54 years, so Tater Patch isn't going anywhere. The city of Rolla will soon learn the extent of the hit to businesses this week when local sales tax receipts for April come in. Because of stocking up at the beginning of quarantine, those numbers were actually up in March compared to last year. In Rolla, I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm taking a few days off. Sarah Fenton will be filling in tomorrow. We will not have a podcast on Monday, Memorial Day. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.